Someone sent us this bike in pieces. We're putting it back together to see what kind of life it had. What intrigues me about these older, simpler machines is what they can teach the newer mechanics. Before we get into all of that, let's look at the kind of components we're dealing with. Up front, simple friction shifters. No clicks, no battery, and no firmware updating required. Also notice, we put the cables on with a good bit of slack. This can help isolate limit screw issues. Back here, the original rear derailleur had some scars, but it cleaned up pretty well. However, checking the original front derailleur, we find this crack in the casting. Possibly from over-torquing the mounting bolt? Likely, I would say. Luckily, we have a spare. In the last episode, we had a contest between six different freewheels. Are you wondering what's gonna go on? Respect to the straight block. The quiet hauls, the least worn gears, or going the corn cob. On these older rides, our first shift adjustment is actually how we mount the rear wheel in the bike. This type of rear derailleur lacks a B-screw to move the body and upper pulley relative to the sprockets. However, we can still get some of that sprocket to pulley adjustment by using these long dropouts. Moving the wheel forward moves the sprockets closer to the guide pulley, which for us is an 18 tooth sprocket. We will want to move forward in the dropouts to get a better pulley to sprocket gap. Mounting the wheel toward the back moves the sprockets up and away from the guide pulley. That would be for free wheels with larger sprockets. These little M3 dropout screws are moved to the axle to repeat this position when the wheel comes out and goes back in. Now comes the part I recommend to bike mechanic instructors and service managers teaching new mechanics. It is this. I find these simple friction shifting systems an excellent way to teach how the system works. That scaffolding builds the knowledge to then adjust the modern indexing system and even the electronic shifting. Let's begin by watching that parallel gram thing before the chain is installed. The spring inside the body is always pulling the cage and pulleys outward to the right or toward these small sprockets. To move the derailleur to the larger sprocket toward the spokes and move the lever that pulls the cable that moves the cage. The parallelogram hits this screw called a limit screw. The limit screws are right in front of us and we can see what they do. They create stops. However, you can see the upper pulley, which guides the chain, is not even under the largest innermost sprocket. I need to move the pulley over. To do this, I need to loosen this screw. Let's try it. I loosen, and I loosen again, and again. But notice something? Nothing's moved. This limit screw will permit more inner movement. However, the pulling of the cable actually does the movement. I pull the lever, and there, it moves to the new setting. There's our first lesson. Don't be confused between limit screw settings and cable pull. The cage now went too far. The screw will need to be tightened. However, don't tighten it just yet. Back off the cable first to avoid forcing the screw to move the lever. Now, let's move down to the small sprocket. Notice again, we are not aligned. I loosen the limit screw, but once again, nothing is happening. No movement. Why? Because my cable is holding it. Relax at the lever, relax the cable, it moves to the stop. Don't mix up cable pull and limit screw settings. Related, but not the same thing. We have the same basic concept up at the front derailleur. The cage moves the parallelogram. The spring always pulls it inward. These screws are used to limit the cage travel. The lever pulls and releases the cable to move the cage between these stops. But check it, this cage is actually hitting the arm. Hmm, remember these witness marks? I wonder what could have made them. Looks like it was the cage. We need to limit that a little bit further in. I bring it in so it clears. Now I'm going to run that screw down till it just contacts. That's as far as it can go, we're clearing. Now back to the rear derailleur. The limit screws are set more or less so we're underneath the two extreme sprockets, that's good enough for now. 
We don't need to be exact because the chain when installed is gonna tell us by the performance. In other words, how the bike shifts is gonna set these more exactly. Chains vary in their lateral stiffness, the wire of the sprockets, the pulleys, all adds up to a little bit different settings between bikes. So we need a chain. Let's get it chained up. A way to size chain in the more modern bikes is from the largest sprocket in front to the largest sprocket in rear. We add either an inch or two inches, depending upon the, the, uh, the gear system. Then we know we were able to shift to those. That's not how this system worked. This older Campagnolo system does not have any spring in the upper pivot nor is there a B adjustment, so I'm not gonna do that. What they preferred is to go small in front, small in back, and we're gonna size the chain as long as possible with just enough tension. So here, I engage the quick link in one side. We can see here, that is too long. I shorten up one, two. That is two links out, two rivets. That's still long. Three, four, the fourth, it's getting closer, isn't it? Still saggy a little bit, no tension. Five, six, the sixth one, that gives me some tension. So we're gonna go to that sixth rivet, long as possible with some tension. Let's cut it. Set the limits so it shifts well at these two extreme sprockets. Set them as tight as possible, but still with good shifting. For the high limit, this one, the outermost limit is right here. Any tighter, it doesn't shift well. For the low limit, it looks to be too tight already. So loosen it just a little bit until it is good. With our limit screws set, we are now done with the screwdriver. Let's have a look at those in-between sprockets. I pedal the pedal and I go ahead and shift. Up, up as I pull, it makes sense. But then if I get this noise, something's wrong. What's to be done? Well, what has to make the adjustment is the onboard computer that's you. It's up to us to back off slightly for those in-between sprockets. That's how it's done on friction system. That is also the same concept, but done differently on an indexing system. So learning where to put the lever, that's part of the game with this system. Now, what about your service managers that are teaching? How is this gonna help? If you can find a bike, that it's actually rideable, in addition to showing, it's really good to teach those concepts that are gonna apply across the board. The focus here is on how it works, more than turn that barrel adjuster stuff. All of the systems are just variations of a friction system. There's going to be a system that positions the extreme sprocket inside and outside. Maybe it's a limit screw. Maybe it's an engineered stopping and starting point. There's going to be a system to move the cage underneath. Maybe it's a spring and a cable. Maybe it's an electrical servo motor. There's going to be a system to position the sprocket correctly under each one. That could be an index to taunt system and a click system. That could be the programming of an electric motor, or it could be the neural connectors under your helmet articulating the linkages at the hand to pull the lever just right to get it quiet. Regardless, try and show how a system works. Then the adventure of adjustment becomes more clear. That was some good progress today. We're getting this bike together. I'd like to know in the comments below, have you ever ridden a friction shifting bike? And how was it for you aligning the sprockets in between. Down below, let us know.